What's good, YouTube? It's your boy TJB24, and today we with another reaction. You feel me? Today we got our boy, our boy Bills, man. I be forgetting this guy's name sometimes. I ain't even gonna lie, but you know what I'm saying. The the complete downfall of Kid Behind the Camera. One of the biggest clickbait channels around honestly i only knew this guy because of his i think that's his dad it might be his grandpa i know him because of angry grandpa you know what i'm saying so yeah um but let's check it out check it out oh hello Hello? What? What? We're just telling stories. Well, <laughs> at least I know the truth. <laughs> the truth is out, folks. Um, yeah, you guys were right. Bridget was cheating. Um, smack the like button if you want me to break up with her, and I mean oh actually, goodness, and... <laughs> okay. Now what happens when you build up a YouTube channel with your father that amasses over 4.7 million subscribers and tons of adoring fans, but suddenly the main person on that channel, aka Angry Grandpa, passes away? I want to send my condolences though, like, you feel me? That was, that was a tragic moment back, I think it was late 2017 if i'm not mistaken it's late 2017 maybe early 2018 around christmas time at least i think but yeah um that was sad for me i didn't really know much about either of them for real like i wasn't like a big like watcher of them but yeah um that was kind of still sad to see like a youtuber pass away like that you feel me so yeah hey do you carry on his legacy or do you use your second channel to clickbait your audience with every single upload depicting a rocky marriage <laughs> assault and infidelity while also using the main channel to continue to upload content involving angry grandpa four years after he has passed away for monetary gain well for michael aka kid behind the camera he would choose the latter. At one point in time, Michael and his father were a well-respected duo on the platform. But after his father sadly passed away in late 2017, right before the new year, Michael took the route of clickbaiting his audience because in his words, We have a problem on YouTube. And I'm, there's no way you don't know it, okay? There's a major problem on YouTube where I know it, they don't know it. There's a major problem on YouTube where I feel like no matter what, you feel me? If you're like one of those clickbait YouTubers all the time, it's gonna get you far, but then, I mean, you're destined to not like stay relevant for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? I saw it a little bit. You have to clickbait, and if you don't clickbait, viewership is gonna drop and interaction you drops and everything. Like, you know, I don't wanna have to clickbait. I wish YouTube wasn't the platform that it is now where I have to clickbait every video. I don't want to do that, man. Now, this is fine if you do it once or twice on YouTube, but after so many times of outright lying to your audience and adoring fans, they start to turn against you. With Michael, Sad. almost every single That's video sad. involves either a clickbait title or thumbnail or even both. Today, we'll look at the complete downfall of Michael Green, aka Kid Behind the Camera. That's that's now, Michael would create his channel, Kid Behind the Camera, in July of 2011. At this point in time, the Angry Grandpa Show just made its one-year anniversary on YouTube. Now, before the Angry Grandpa Show made its way onto the YouTube platform, Michael and Charles would upload their grainy videos onto two different websites, LiveLeak and Break.com. Their first video to YouTube would be a video titled, The Angry Grandpa Response to YouTube. Hold up. In the description- What? What is this? Michael and Charles would upload their grainy videos onto two different websites, LiveLeak and LiveLeak and Break. What? That is a thing? Like, 
I didn't even know, like, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing, bro. That's crazy. Break.com. Their first video to YouTube would be a video titled The Angry Grandpa Response to YouTube. In the description of this video, it would state that we are banned on YouTube. This is our response. You can see the unrated versions on Lively and Break.com. They were censoring themselves throughout the video and blocking out any swear words. This for me feels like they were insinuating that they either got a temporary ban of their channel or they had a previous channel that was permanently deleted off of YouTube. But alas, The Angry Grandpa Show would start their legacy on YouTube, uploading videos of Charles freaking out on small situations. Michael would create Kid Behind a Camera for a second channel that would show the aftermath of pranks and behind the scenes of the Angry Grandpa Show. But this would also become Michael's more personal channel as time would progress. The Angry Grandpa Show <coughs> would start to pick up in steam right out of the gate, and before long, the channel would hit its first huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers just two years That's after creating the channel. Now, with the growth That's of the Angry Grandpa Show, there would also be simultaneous growth with Michael's channel as well. These channels would grow at pretty much the same rate. Eventually, both channels would grow to over 1 million million subscribers in 2015. So one of the biggest things these two would do with every subscriber milestone was a dare or prank. One of the worst pranks that Michael has ever played on AGP was when they both got tattoos for their 1 million subscriber milestone. Ah, uh, check out my bike. Let's get that a mirror. Show me your bike. Show me your bike. Tell me your bike. Do I have a bike? Oh my god. Is it on? I love it. Oh ah. There it is, Dad, if you want to see it. What? Can back the up I can't see. How does this work? How does it work? Somebody. That is messed up. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That is actually messed up. To actually like make your grandpa tattoo that. I mean, he a grown man too, so I ain't even gonna like sugarcoat none of that. But that's still messed up though. Like he wasn't even aware. Like you feel me of what she was tattooing on. His body, bro. You want to hold this mirror? I can't see the goddamn thing. What? My ass stinks. <laughs> oh man, is that what it says? <laughs> Dad! Oh shit! He's my on. Ass He's oh, on. Fuck you, play on me, motherfucker. Hey. What do you mean my ass stink? He told what me to do, do it. it. He told me to do what it. it. Get out! Come on. You got to go. You got to go. They're going to call the fucking cops. Call the goddamn You got to go. Man, I got to go. As you just saw. I see why you said that was the worst prank, bro. That was. Bro, I ain't going to lie. That prank was so, like. That sound like it would get somebody a headache. That's all I'm saying, like. From the video, AGP thought he was getting a motorcycle for his tattoo. When Michael told the tattoo artist to change that tattoo idea to a toxic symbol with writing underneath stating that his ass stinks. As you can tell, Angry Grandpa was not happy at this so-called prank and would get into a fit of rage and would destroy a guitar that was hanging on the wall inside the tattoo parlor, resulting in all three of them getting banned from the tattoo parlor. Now in a vlog uploaded in 2016, Michael That's would crazy. recall an incident involving him and Bridget that would result in the advertising. Oh my bro. goodness. I was looking at generation gaming. Premium, bro. Like, look. Capital One shopping is amazing. Yeah, be if you're a gamer, you can. YouTube Premium is the way, according to. That would result in Bridget getting arrested. In the summer of 2013, Bridget would end up being arrested. The story goes like this. Michael was trying to record music late at night to the early morning of June 12th. As he was recording, he would become frustrated because he was repeatedly messing up his song. So what happens next? Well, Michael would scream because of how angry he got and would wake up his sleeping girlfriend, Bridget. Bridget would become extremely angry because she was woken up out of her sleep and the two would begin to argue. Eventually, Michael would leave the apartment for a short amount of time, but Bridget would follow him still screaming at him. Michael would return and the two would hear a knock on the front door. Thinking it was just the neighbors telling them to be quiet, Michael and Bridget would ignore the first set of knocks. But after the person behind the door explained that they were the police, they would eventually answer the door. Now, during this whole ordeal, Michael's dog would get scared and scratch Michael on his neck. These scratches were visible to the officers, and with Bridget still being in a bad mood and arguing, now with the officers, they would put handcuffs on her and take her away. See, even though Michael had told the cops that it was their dog that gave him the scratches, the officers didn't believe him because of how Bridget was acting, resulting <laughs> in her getting arrested That's and detained for two Bridget, hours man. before being released due to lack Bridget. of evidence. 
This story was told as a funny memory of the two, which to me isn't that funny of a story. I now I know the rise was pretty quick, funny. and it may seem like I'm glossing over Kid Behind the Camera's rise, but because it came off the backbone of the Angry Grandpa show, it wasn't all that eventful. Before I go any further, I know that there is a video that is floating around there showing AGP being abusive towards a kid, calling him homophobic slurs and throwing a car at him, and making contact with that said car. I'm only mentioning the video because it will not be in this video. This Bro, I need a lot. Like, no disrespect, and I mean, it's like, with all due respect, I feel like none of that should be held against somebody after, you feel me, after they pass, you feel me, but, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal to me, that don't affect me, you feel me, <laughs> This video is about Michael, not about Angry Grandpa. Moving on, the Angry Grandpa show would reach 2 million subscribers just a year after hitting 1 million subscribers. And during that same year of hitting 2 million subscribers, the Angry Grandpa show would hit 3 million subscribers in November of 2016. But sadly, this would be the last milestone that Charles would be around to see. In February of 2017, AGP would upload a video titled Angry Grandpa Has Cancer. In this video, Angry Grandpa would tell Michael that he has cancer and that he would have to go into surgery. Eventually, he would beat cancer, but it would later be revealed that Angry Grandpa had cirrhosis of his liver, with a number of other health-related issues that would come to light in a video titled Angry Grandpa's Back. In this video, we would see Angry Grandpa in a wheelchair discussing with Michael everything that has happened when he was in the hospital. Sadly, just a couple months after that video, Charles Green would sadly pass away. Now, this is where things start to go downhill for Michael. After oh, the R.I.P. Angry tough. Grandpa video came out, there would be a little- so basically, what he said is- that after Angry Grandpa passed, you feel me? Came behind the camera, basically started going down the wrong. Like, he started like falling off, I guess you could say. I mean, I don't know. I have a link really in the description box. That um, link sent you to a page for merch right after Angry Grandpa died. Here's his explanation to why that link and merch was released not even a couple days or a week after AGP had passed away. 48 hours after he dies, you have a t-shirt that says, rest in peace, Grandpa. Is that a real thing? Is that a real t-shirt you had? Yeah, it's a real, that's not me. I don't design the t-shirts. That was Broadband TV. Now, here's my issue. I know that he allegedly was under contract with Broadband TV, so he says in that clip that I showed, but I think via request, they could have waited to create the merch. Facts. And That's he never facts. had to promote That's the merch in his description. Facts. It's literally the second sentence before read more. I'm not saying that Michael was lying, but I do, for one, think that there were ways that Michael could have stopped the production of the merch. And for him to put all the blame on Broadband TV, it shouldn't have been all the blame on them as well, because there's a way that he could just not have promoted the merch. I know you were under contract, but Angry Grandpa had just passed away, so I'm pretty sure they would have worked it in there saying that you didn't need to promote the merch. At least not that soon. But now there was an even bigger problem. Angry Grandpa was the bread and butter to the Angry Grandpa show. So without him, the main channel had very little direction. Or so we thought. Michael would upload a video to the main channel talking about the direction of the channel and how he had tons of unreleased videos that he could oh upload goodness. and how Angry Grandpa wanted his channel to continue. I feel like that's like, like he, he used the channel as like, it was like a record label. You feel me? Like how record labels treat artists after they pass. You feel me? Like, like, hmm, I think, I think it was Empire, Empire with X and whatever, it, what was you signed to? He, Whatever um Lil Baby is, you know what I'm saying, associated with with juice basically. I feel like it could have been way avoided. Like like if he would have just let the channel like and like build his own, it would have been easier for him to you know what I'm saying? But hey, I don't know. I'm I have a different like I'm it's my own perspective, you know what I mean? So, his yeah. legacy even though i feel like it's a little strange i could understand why he would continue to upload on that main channel but enough about the angry grandpa channel we will now take a deeper dive into michael's main channel kid behind the camera after angry grandpa died there was very little content that michael could upload on his second channel and without having angry grandpa as his thumbnail or the reason why fans would come and watch his vlogs michael would dive headfirst into clickbaiting his audience that is tough bro that is tough 
He basically was just telling us that Angry Grandpa is the only reason why he's re- why he was ever relevant. That's tough, bro. <laughs> Making multiple videos stating That's that crazy. the two were dead broke and bad. had to sell the house. Even though multiple times in 2020, he would flex on Twitter with how much money he had, stating that he's a millionaire. More recently, he has uploaded a string of videos that depicted Bridget of cheating on him with another girl, uploading videos like Bridget's girlfriend, Bridget's first kiss, and Bridget doesn't love me anymore. Of course, there are more of these clickbait titles, but that's just a few that I wanted to point out. This was also after Bridget gave birth to Michael's second child. Michael has resorted to having every video be clickbait, and the acting in the videos are so bad, it's like watching a B-movie from the 1980s. <laughs> At this point, I have no clue That's who funny. Michael's target audience is, and it seems like he's just trying to pad runtime to add more revenue. It seems like every upload, Michael is trying to become more and more like Angry Grandpa, with the way he acts and his anger. Now, Bridget and Michael's relationship might be fine outside of the cameras, but the way they interact throughout the videos, or even even the thumbnails depicting an abusive household makes it seem like their relationship isn't solid. He would also be called out for creating a thumbnail and title for a video saying that he had a heart attack. Michael would also become friends with Daddy05 in 2017 and would end up defending him when Daddy05 would be called out for abuse towards kids. But of course Michael would defend him. He had his own channel called Life with Michael where he would torment his nephews for some views. <laughs> Some, some people, bro. I feel bad for the white nephew, though. No, I know this is usually the point where I'll say something nice like that I understand where Michael is coming from because I lost my father a long time ago as well. But because this video is criticizing him, he probably won't make it this far to the video. And that's okay, but I do think he needs to change the direction. Also, by the way, have y'all seen the donation button on the Angry Grandpa Show YouTube channel? Just, just pointing it out there. But anyways, this has been the complete downfall the of Michael, right? aka Kid Behind the Camera. I don't know what happens next Man, for his channel, but if he continues to clickbait his audience, then they will eventually all leave. We have covered people in the GTA 5 community on this channel that clickbaited with every upload, and now they barely have a platform or have been run off of YouTube. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, that's a L. That's a L for um Mr. Uh, Kid Behind the Camera. I ain't gonna lie, like that's a L for him. I didn't go in front, bro. The biggest L that he ever took. So, yeah. What do I want to say? I personally have nothing against K behind the camera. He always, like, I was never really, like, the biggest fan of none of them, for real. I just knew who they were, and I just thought it'd be interesting to see this video specifically. Go ahead and watch the rest of it, though. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? I get my way. Watch town. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You feel me? Gotta be a W. Y'all boys enjoy it, the video, you feel me? Like, subscribe, comment, do all that extra stuff. And your boy is out.